Welcome back to the course Corrosion Protection Methods. Today we have uh, lecture 35 and the broad topic is change in electrode potential and associated corrosion protection. In last few lectures we talked about the mechanism and mixed potential theory based analysis of cathodic protection as well as anodic protection. And within cathodic protection we have two uh, variations one is uh, ICCP or impressed current cathodic protection another one is sacrificial anode. And then last lecture we talked about uh, uh, the different aspects of cathodic and anodic protections. We started with cathodic protection. We uh, talked about design, how do we set up uh, uh, cathodic protections both uh, ICCP as well as sacrificial anode. And today we will take up uh, the design aspect of anodic protection. And before that, uh, we would like to talk about uh, uh, the problems associated with cathodic protection to the structures nearby to the uh, setup where cathodic protection is built or uh, cathodic protection is uh, applied. So, we have a typical failure part, failure uh, aspect which is called stray current corrosion. So, we will just briefly talk about that stray current effect, stray, stray current effect and then we will go ahead with the design aspect of anodic protection. So, if we talk about the stray current, the problem with cathodic protection In fact, it is short, it is called CP to nearby structures or setup. So, this one we will discuss. So, this is associated with stray current. Now, uh, let us see. Uh, uh, one ICCP setup. Okay. So, let us say this is my water tank which is buried. Some tank and then this is the earth surface. So, we have our DC power source. This is the negative terminal. This is positive terminal. Now, we have one anode. And then surrounding that we have backfill. This is inert. So, this is typical ICCP. Current uh, enters to the steel part from the anode. Now, let us say if we let us say there is another pipeline which is uh, going just below the this uh, uh, ICCP setup. Now, we know that uh, when uh, some material some metal object is uh, station very close to a strong current field, a potential difference develops. So, this is basically a strong current field this is a strong current field now that would lead to and this is this pipeline. So, this is the pipeline very nearby let us say carrying petroleum product. So, that is or water let us say. So, that is very close to this strong current field. So, this will generate a potential difference. And that would lead to a corrosion in the zone 
and since uh, there is a potential difference there will be current flow and the current flow pattern would look like this. So, these are the current which is flowing into the nearby pipeline which is the metallic pipeline definitely. Now, since it is say the, the circuit has to be completed. So, the current would try to leave this surface around this zone, the current would leave this surface and enter through this because of this potential difference this current is flowing. This is the current which is flowing out, of course this will also be there. Now, we know that wherever current leaves that electrical current leaves and this is of course, uh, this is cathode and this is anode. Now, wherever in the metallic object, wherever current leaves that part is susceptible for dissolution. So, now this particular segment is susceptible for dissolution or corrosion. So, now cathode is still protected which is steel tank, but this particular pipeline which is stationed close to that and that does not have any cathodic protection. So, then the part where from current leaves because of that current flow within the pipeline due to the potential difference and due to the presence of it near the strong current field. So, this segment will corrode and there would be leakage there could be a possibility of leakage fine. So, this is the very aspect of and this current what it is what is flowing into the nearby pipeline due to the potential difference that current is nothing but the stray current. Now, these stray current would lead to a serious defect like serious failure like leakage. Now, how to stop it and this happens uh, even if it is uh, this pipeline is close to uh, sacrificial anode uh, segment also, but in case of sacrificial anode segment the problem could be little less because the current flow could be the, the magnitude of the current would be little less. Now, if you see here how to protect then this particular item unnoticed and then suddenly people notice that there is a leakage. So, that can also be protected. Let us say this is set up by some company, company A let us say and this is set up by company B. Now, uh, let us see how to protect it and then this two company uh, influence of uh, the involvement of this two company will come up. Now, this pipeline should be also part of this single cathodic protection uh, device okay, or cathodic protection setup. So, that can be done like this. If this pipeline can also be made into cathode, Okay. If this is done, if this is done, then the stray current problem can be avoided. So, how to do it? So, what we can do? You can make a rev revised design or setup. So, this is the tank. this is my inert anode
and this is the pipeline we are talking about. Now, what can be done? We can have one more anode on the other side. and that can be connected to this And this steel tank can be connected to this pipeline. So, this is my negative terminal, this is anode, so this is cathode. So, this also become cathode. Now, current flow direction would be like this. Now, this current will also flow like this. And now, the current will glow through this. Okay. So, that means, current is going and then following this conductor path. Okay. So, this is a conductor. This is the conductor. So, now we see that this also become cathode. So, steel tank and that pipeline uh, can both be protected by this kind of anodic arrangement and interestingly these anode, the anode around that particular protection, the around that particular object which is to be protected. So, that particular let us say steel tank, if we can have anodes around it, so that both sides if it is a big thing then both sides can have current. So, wherever both sides, all the se segments of this steel tank is getting current entering into it through the electrolyte. So, it will be actually protected. So, this is the solution from stray current. Okay. So, this is one problem. Uh, one can experience. Now, coming to the company E and company B, uh, company B, now what they can do, these two companies can shake hand and then say that we will try to arrange a, a system like this and then share the cost of maintenance and set up, setting up and maintenance of this particular protection thing. So, that way uh, both the things are protected at the same time costs are also shared. So, this is one important aspect for uh, or in case of cathodic protection, uh, which can be actually looked at very carefully. And in fact, this is a problem. In fact, sometimes uh, wherever you have tram line flowing, tram line uh, set up on the road and if uh, time to time the pipeline system, that water line system just below the tram line can get leaked. And that leakage, uh, the reason is uh, the stray current because when tram line moves that it is under a strong current field. So, that current field can induce potential difference uh, between the tram line and the pipeline below the tram line. So, the stray current effect just like this can happen and leakage can form. Now, coming to uh, the calculation of number of anodes required for a protection of steel tank or pipeline.
or uh, the current output. So, that part we will take up little later, but now let us discuss little bit on uh, anodic protection and then uh, we will uh, talk about uh, 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 the difference between anodic and cathodic protections. So, now coming to the design of anodic protection. So, for that uh, we need couple of things we need, we need a potentiostat. So, this is needed for polarization or anodic polarization. So, characteristically uh, it can be possible this particular protection can be possible for active passive metal. like chromium, nickel, iron, titanium, all those cases we can have such protection methods. Now, as we have discussed before, as per mixed potential theory, schematically if we see this is E voltage and log I current. So, now what happens? You have active passive metal anodic part, this is my anodic part. Now, I can have the cathodic reaction coming like this. So, now if I can take the potential at this location, then my I P becomes which is the I passive becomes I cot okay? because that is nothing but I A or the anodic dissolution rate. See in order to take the potential then this is my corrosion potential E cor. So, my corrosion and this belongs to I cor or, or corrosion rate at that point. Now, if I take the potential this location or let us say E protection, the current requirement would be this much, which is I A minus I C, I applied and we have seen that this I applied is nearly equal to I P or equal to I A. So, uh, potential stat is needed to take the potential from this location to this point. Now, how the arrangement is made? Let us say we have a steel tank. So, this is a steel tank and there are two small entry point through one through which we have one terminal. So, this is my terminal one terminal and this is H2SO4. And through that we can have auxiliary cathode. Let us say platinum or platinized platinum. So, self dissolution rate would be very low. Then we can have one more terminal which is for 
this is three electrode system, this is reference electrode, now we have a potentiostat. So, it this cathode since this is cathode it is to be connected to negative terminal and this reference and this particular terminal which is connected to steel container. Now, this is my positive end and the potential difference between these two is nothing but del E and this del E is required uh, for the potential uh, see it is basically close to that potential that potential difference should be created to take the potential to E protection fine. So, this will be kept at a uh, so this particular potential will be achieved. in this electrode. This is considered to be electrode. So, this is steel tank becomes positive end fine. So, that is the potential difference we are creating. So, we take the potential upward and for that reason we need the current as we go ahead initially the current requirement would be very high, but once we reach to the protection potential then the current requirement will be very low which is close to corrosion current density. In fact, here one inform good one, one important aspect is we know what would be the my what would be my corrosion rate which is little which is not possible in case of uh, cathodic protection which is bit of empirical. But here once we know because it it is it is decided by the polarization behavior of that metal in that particular solution or that condition. But of course, it has to have active passive behavior. So, now once we have this setup, then we can have a strong anodic protection. So, this is my setup, okay. And this happens because of anodic polarization, what we have here. Now, interestingly, here also these wires, these wires are to be properly insulated. Otherwise, they can also corrode uh, uh, in the presence of H2SO4 and they can also have effect on those uh, auxiliary cathode as well as uh, reference electrode. So, that is what it has to be properly insulated. Uh, to avoid galvanic cell formation. Now, if we try to look at some of the advantages what cathodic protection provide. So, though the initial current requirement would be very high as well as this setup is bit complicated as well as it takes a lot of uh, initial installation cost, but once it is achieved the uh, E co protection can be maintained, the current density required for protection or current requirement for protection would be very, very tiny. Uh, so, the cost of maintenance is very low. This is not true in case of uh, at least ICCP, even sacrificial anode because time to time you have to replace those anodes in case of sacrificial anode. Even uh, in case of uh, ICCP, at times we have to replace uh, uh, those inert anodes, sometimes they can break. For example, high silicon steel anodes, they are very bulky, but they are brittle. So, while transportation many times those big uh, anodes do get broken. Okay. So, now if we try to look at some of the comparative uh, uh, natures of uh, anodic and cathodic protections. Uh, 
first of all let us say the comparison let us look at comparison. And here, so if we talk about uh, type of metal which can be protected, it has to be active passive. But here, all metals provided we find another metal which can have much lower potential compared to the metal which is to be protected. So, that becomes sacrificial case, but in case of ICCP, uh, it is all about uh, finding a DC source and then connecting the negative terminal to the uh, metal and positive terminal to the inert anode. Now, Corrosiveness, if we talk about electrolyte or uh, where we can employ this, so it is basically weak to aggressive. In case of it can be uh, weak to moderate, moderately uh, corrosive solution, corrosive situation, this can be used. Now, for example, here it, uh, in case of anodic protection, the steel tank which is holding H2SO4, but if we talk about pipeline protection uh, in soil, the soil may not have that much of corrosiveness uh, as compared to H2SO4. So, it is moderately corrosive. Of course, the soil can become highly corrosive if uh, industrial belt, uh, if we have uh, uh, mixing of uh, those uh, uh, factory uh, chemicals, if they mix up with uh, soil, that time that particular soil become highly corrosive. Okay. So, that time uh, the dissolution rate of sacrificial anode, if we consider, will be very fast. Now, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, installation or relative cost, if we talk about installation uh, as well as operation, there are two aspects, installation and operation. Installation in this case would be very high. Of course, this all those potential start and uh, complicated uh, connection system, insulation of uh, those uh, auxiliary cathode as well as a reference electrode, those will cost very high as well as uh, taking the potential from the E core to the E protection uh, that goes to a very high current density. So, we will see some values, this is very high. But operation wise, once it uh, once that protection potential is achieved, then that would be uh, a very low. Since the current requirement would be very small to maintain at that e, e protection. So, this is very high, this is very low. Whereas, uh, operation cost, uh, if we consider ICCP, it is a bit high. So, we can say moderate for ICCP, but it will be costly, it will be less costly for sacrificial. Sacrificial anode. Uh, now, if we talk about their maintenance or operations, operation uh, generally it is uh, low. Operation is also uh, same way I think, ICCP operation could be little uh, costlier uh, and sacrificial anode will be little less costlier both way uh, operation wise and installation wise, but 
installation in case of anodic protection is very high. Now, if we talk about uh, throwing power, so that means, uh, uh, initial power that is required or initial current that is required to reach to that E protection is very high. So, if we look at if we look at this, so at initially there will be a lot of current that should be spent before we reach to E protection. That is what throwing power would be very high and here it will be uh, low because uh, not much of uh, uh, initial current is required. Now, uh, significance if we consider significance of applied current. This is interesting here we will see that I applied is nothing but I core. So, now all the time I will be knowing what is my corrosion rate of the metal which is being protected. So, that is what it, it gives you a very direct measure. of corrosion rate. So, that means, we know how much protection we are giving, but uh, in this case it is bit complex. We are just initially thinking that this will be the current requirement for certain degree of protection for certain time duration, but it does not show the actual current density uh, uh, which is basically the indicative of corrosion rate. Now, it will be dynamic because if the resistivity of the soil changes with time with season, then uh, it will be very difficult to uh, uh, realize how much is basically the current throwing uh, current requirement or current uh, 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 requirement for the protection. So, that actually gives a little complicated uh, uh, situation to know that how long this protection method would work. So, that is what time to time maintenance or uh, time to time uh, a regular uh, checkup for the system is required. Fine. So, and coming to the operating conditions. This is very accurate, precise, because I know this that I applied is nothing but I core, and this can be determined by doing electrochemical polarization. We do a polarization and then see what is the uh, protection potential range. So, that means if we talk about uh, e versus log i. So, if we do polarization, so this is the connection point, so this is my i core z core. If we do polarization, we get a curve like this. Now, we directly know what will be my protection potential. protective potential range. So, then we can set up where we would like to be. So, if we want to be here, then I can reach there 
and even with a little fluctuation in that power source, still I will be in the protection zone. So, that is the advantage we have, uh, but here it is mostly empirical. How do we come to that uh, device making and current requirement? It is more of empirical. Okay. Empirical determination. So, these are the uh, basic differences what we have. Now, coming to one uh, small uh, aspect I would like to talk about. So, we talk about the throwing power and then uh, uh, installation as well as throwing power is very high and then once it achieves E protection, then the current requirement would be very low. So, uh, what we could see that uh, in case of anodic protection and cathodic protections, uh, uh, based on different aspects like electrolyte, relative cost, installation, operations, we could see a distinct difference between these two things cathodic and anodic protections. So, we will continue our discussion on this and we will try to do few things like uh, how much would be the throwing power in case of anodic protection if we have some data set so that it will be very clear. And also, we will try to look at the calculation of number of anodes that will be required to give certain current output for the protection of a, a steel body or a pipeline system or steel tank. And that would vary depending on whether we have a magnesium anode or zinc anode or aluminum anode. So, we will discuss that in our next lecture. So, till then, thank you. Thank you.